Okay, so what we've been doing so far this week is to take some big data sets and play with them, clean them up, and most of all, we've been looking for holes in them. We've been looking for what we don't know. And today we begin to switch gears a bit and talk about what we do know. Okay, which is to say, now we're not talking about inadequate sampling and incomplete sampling. Instead, we're talking about, um, about what the biology and what, the, what the, the interesting things in there are. So obvious we have, obviously, we still have some challenges in getting from those incomplete data to the biology lessons, right? Diversity patterns, things like that. So we're going to take the morning to talk about that kind of most common uh, product that you get out of these biodiversity diagnoses. And that's a map of diversity, a map of endemism. Later on, you get to things like uh, conservation prioritizations. And that actually already has been the subject of a one-day course in a, in a uh, previous meeting of this group. So. Essentially, all we're going to do is start to talk about, about diversity and endemism. And just as kind of a, a preface to the day, I just wanted to throw out some ideas about richness and endemism. And the main point is get your concepts right. Get your thinking clear. Now, it may well be that I go through a pretty short presentation about this, and Arturo has Arturo, who's, who's going to speak next, has very different ideas. That's fine. The important thing is to be explicit, okay? But I'll give you some examples of, of things that aren't fine. So if you look at the usual products, okay, the one that clearly dominates on the internet is Conservation International's hot spots of biodiversity. Anybody know what a hotspot is? What is it? A hotspot is a big an ecosystem where you might find a rich and large biodiversity. Okay, so rich and large biodiversity. That sounds right to me. Okay. But now look at the map. Look. Just for example, it's a little bit hard. By the way, tomorrow we'll be talking about making figures. And one of the things we'll talk about is never ever putting red and green together. Because 10% of the people in the world see gray and gray. So really bad map here. <laughs> but I always thought that the Amazon had really great <coughs> biodiversity. <coughs> but there's no hot spot in the Amazon. Hmm. And, oh, look at that, the Congo. In fact, Africa, the biodiversity hot spots are West Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, the Atlas Mountains, and the Northeast. Does that make sense? I mean, I kind of want to see something just East, just west of here. Um, I don't see any of the tepuis. So what is a hot spot? Anybody know what Conservation International does with hot spots? High plant diversity combined with great endangerment, okay? And that ends up mixing two quantities. So you end up with, with quite a, a mishmash. And sometimes maps are more effective at politics or fundraising than they are at communicating biology. Here's another one we've heard, megadiverse countries, okay? And those countries that got on the list are always saying, yeah, but we're a megadiverse country. 
<laughs> You're nothing. And look at that in Africa. In fact, we have no one from any of those three countries, if, I, if I'm correct. So none of you comes from a particularly interesting country as far as biodiversity. The US, of course, got on the list. I don't really know why. Again, this is, you know, what is mega diverse? Is it lots of species? Is it lots of unique species? <coughs> so this is where we get into trouble over and over again. So I went a little deeper. I went beyond the fundraising pages. And for example, Nature Conservancy has um, these pages, numbers of bird species. That kind of useful map. Um, and then goes on to number of endemic species. There's a pick list. You go to terrestrial maps, and then you can do all these different maps. So number of endemic species. I found that one really interesting. Endemic species of what? Microbes, plants, nematodes. You know, I couldn't find any definition. Only 70? And then my big question of the day is, what is endemic? Let's see. I'm going to ask two different people for definitions. Moses, what's ende endemic? Hold on. <coughs> when you say this is endemic to the Cameroon Mountains, what does it mean? Yeah, in endemic means a particular species that occurs in a particular <coughs> area and it's only found in Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, Lindsay, in your world, what's endemic? Oh, in, in the public health world. Okay. So it would be um, if you have a disease in a certain area that's always present, a low-lying present, so it's just constantly there. So it's established there. It's, yeah. So you see, once again, we have problems. And in fact, so that's public health versus biodiversity. Even when the, within the biodiversity world, we don't get it right. Before I get back to that, I want to mention a couple other things. Global patterns of species richness in a recent paper that got a fair amount of press. And you see these patterns for terrestrial mammals and marine mammals and terrestrial birds and such and such and such. Global patterns of species richness mapped for 13 marine and terrestrial taxa. For each taxon, we outline biodiversity hotspots of the top 10 most species rich places on Earth. Those are the bold lines in black. Interesting, look at this. For mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, marine fishes, cephalopods, corals, mangroves, and seagrasses, we used expert verified geographical ranges. So this is what I call smart people with crayons, right? <laughs> For terrestrial vascular plants, we used the number of species in different regions and calculated species richness as the highest number of species occurring in the regions intersecting 100 kilometer grid cells. So notice again that we're mixing things up but losing the clarity of what is what. So we get into a lot of trouble. First of all, what is biodiversity? Some of you know Jorge Soberon. Jorge was recently heard to say that whoever it was who invented the word biodiversity should be shot. <laughs> but we can ask these questions of what is species richness and what is endemism? Those key terms that we use as our probably principal currency in this field. Now I'm going to leave most of these points to Arturo. Um, but I want to just give you a little bit more of an illustration on this term endemic. Okay, you already heard 
Uh, Lindsay's definition, regularly found among particular people or in a certain area, so areas where malaria is endemic, or for biodiversity, native or restricted to a certain country or area. So endemic to Uganda, endemic to the Cameroon Mountains. Okay, but notice that I'm saying that species is found only in this particular place, this defined region, and not outside of it. So if you look in the world of biodiversity information products, you can find this, which is an, a map of endemic bird areas. Okay, this is from BirdLife International. And this is a really interesting map. If you look at it, if you sit and spend some time with it, you see some really interesting things. Now, there's a whole bunch of species that are found only in the southeastern U.S. No endemic bird area there. And let's go back to my favorite ones, the Congo and the Amazon. And notice that there really aren't any endemic bird areas there, but the Amazon is full of species that are found only in the Amazon. Um, Africa does a little bit better under this definition. Not a lot, but a little bit better. The Congo is still pretty boring. Okay. So what's going on? What is an endemic bird area? Well, they ought to be areas where species are confined to those areas. This is from the same web page. Worldwide, the most important places for habitat-based conservation of bird, birds are the endemic bird areas. So right away, we're doing marketing, right? Most species are quite widespread and have large ranges. However, over 2,500 species are restricted to an area smaller than 50,000 50, kilometers squared. And they are said to be endemic to it. So a species is endemic to its own range. Right? What? I thought that endemism was relative to a region, a place. But here, a species is endemic to a certain number of square kilometers, which is to say, Every species on Earth, by this sort of definition, is endemic. And I would rather say that every species on Earth is endemic to Earth. That makes more sense with the definition that Moses just gave us. But what we're really hearing is that the criterion for endemism is 50,000 square kilometers. So if we can't understand each other when we use a single key word in scientific discussions, we're in a lot of trouble. What is richness? A lot of things. We're going to hear about that next, perhaps a bit more explicitly in the literature. What is richness? A big stinking mess. I would say that the science that we do is a function of how clearly we think. So we're in trouble. So years and years ago, one of my students and I wrote this paper about the endemic bird areas. Um, and it was simply a commentary that we're using one term to refer to two very different concepts. And so we gave this set of, this set of maps. And essentially, in each map, we put two taxa. So for example, this is Sophia crepitan, the Sophia uh, trumpeters. They, they look like a small chicken, usually mostly black. And they're across the Amazon basin, but they're very much structured species by species um, by river boundaries, okay? So here is crepitans is north of the Amazon, and Leucoptera is between the Amazon and the, the Madeira and Viridus is south and east of the Madeira and the, and the, the Amazon. 
But then this other set of things are the Atlapedes tricolor group, which is dots are tricolor. There's a triangle in there somewhere that, that is fusco olivaceous, and the plus sign is the entire range of flaviceps. <laughs>